Thank you for listening to Lone Star Community Radio. This program was broadcasted and recorded live from the LSCR studios in downtown Conroe, Texas. Lone Star Community Radio is supported by listeners like you. Donate and sponsor today. For more information on getting involved with Lone Star Community Radio, contact us at lscrstudios at gmail.com or visit us online at www.irlonestar.com. Well, I have an announcement to make. Check it out now. I have returned from my four days of darkness, and I have arrived at a decision on my future, Dick. What did the tea leaves tell you? <laughs> I'm going to continue doing radio. Oh, audience and of one. audience of one with Andrew and Dick. Yes, that's yeah. my decision. After four days of darkness. That's good to see. Oh, that's right. He's, he finally came out of his hole. He did. Right, right, uh, we came out at the exact same time. Yeah, he was your Nuts. neighbor in the neighbor yes. cave. Neighbor cave. Yeah, we would knock on each other in the wall. Yeah, but no, no, I did not. I did not go into hiding for four days. But, anyways, you look a little, uh, little sun kissed there, man. Yeah, it was uh, a busy weekend. So uh, I do want to remind folks: audience of one Wednesdays, ten a.m. at ten a.m. podcast, YouTube, Facebook, all that stuff. Look up audience of one with Andrew and Dick. But yeah, uh, this weekend, downtown Connor had a big top marketplace. It's a traveling marketplace that comes around, I want to say once or twice a year here. But the family and I went out, and it was fun. And then nice. I forgot that the sun is the sun. and, and with It's the, going to do sun things. Well, the weather here is Texas weather. So I brought my jacket. It was a little nippy in the morning. And then by 30 minutes walking around, I was like, I'm sweating. And so next thing I know... I wake up this morning, I look at my arms, and I'm like, oh, you can kind of see it. Yeah. Because I'm a, I'm a pale boy. Yeah. I'm a yeah. pale boy. Well, it's definitely that time of year um, in Texas where you can conceivably turn on the heater at night and then the air conditioner during the day. Mm-hmm. It's really strange. I don't think a lot of places around the, the country have that issue, at least not as often as we do. We yeah, have I it mean, for a good month in there, To it seems. be an AC guy in Texas is a solid job. I would think so, yeah. Solid. I just had to get a new one last year. Oh, my gosh. Expensive. Yeah. Anyways. I mean, uh, yeah. And we, that's, that should be our sponsor. It's an AC guy. <laughs> no kidding. Because, you know, no they, want, they want to get that out there. But, uh, yeah. So, how about you? How would you? How's your weekend? You doing okay? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. I, I, I do think we need to have a little bit of show cleanup from last week. And I think this is the problem with having a show that only goes out once a week. Yeah. When you make a mistake or you realize you said something that maybe wasn't completely true. Well, we're not journalists. First, we're, we're, we're definitely We're not. entertainers. Uh, absolutely, we are. Yeah. yeah that's so what I consider myself. We don't myself. care if we're wrong. Well, I, I cared in this sense, and it bothered me all week, okay. and so now I had to wait till this show to come back to, to correct it, but last week you asked me if I had seen Starship Troopers, and okay. I said no, yeah. and you know what? Did you lie to me? I, I did not tell a lie. I, uh, I just didn't remember, and I went back and looked it up, and I'm like, oh yeah, I've seen that movie. In fact, I've seen it a couple of times, and um, I remember at the time liking it, so I just want to make sure that I let you as well as the audience know, yes, I have seen the 1997 great action movie. Sci-fi flick. Yeah, that's a good movie. Starship. Starship Troopers, yes. So. Well, good. That's good. I mean, I know the audience was like, this guy's full of it. He's never seen <laughs> no that No one movie. has not ever seen that movie. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. I mean, Sci-Fi Channel is on repeat with that. <laughs> and I guess, I don't even know if Sci-Fi Channel is around anymore. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Well, I heard you on uh, the Cindy Cochran show this past week. The great Cindy yeah, Cochran. Yeah, she had a good week. She's got some interesting guests. And yeah, you, you weren't one of them, but you did kind of co-host, yeah. as you will do from time to time. Cindy Cochran, by the way, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 2 o'clock, right 106.1, yeah. 104.5, IRLoneStar.com, all the good She'll stuff. She'll probably right? want you to be on her show. Well, she's got, she's got to send out the invite, I guess. Yeah. But anyways, I heard you on there, and you said something pretty interesting that I went, wait, wait, uh, wait a well, minute. Probably fibbed or... No, no, you, you did say that you wanted 20 children. 20, yeah, hell yeah. Who else is, is going to work at this radio station? <laughs> right. You're going to have them running the boards and doing yeah. the lighting and everything. Yeah. And I thought, 20 kids. That's a lot of kids, Dick. Is that, the, is that what they ended up doing at that slaughterhouse? Did you hear that report a couple weeks ago? Where <laughs> up in the Northeast, the slaughterhouse got caught with children who were working. Oh, no. And like legit working, they were getting paid. And it was, well, what are they complaining about? They're getting paid. 
I don't know. How, how old are kids we talking about here? Like, I think like twelve to fifteen. That's, I think that's, that's but I, I, like that's I, young man. Well, I, I don't know if it was like family members though. I was like, oh, oh I right. bet it's like family members or something. But you know that what's the jungle? Remember that book? Well, the jungle uh, book. So I remember no, that. No, it's called, I think it's called the jungle. Uh, Austin, it's not Austin Sinclair, but it's about the meatpacking industry in like mm-hmm. the uh, early nineteen twenties, I think. About how all the kids work there because their hands are small and they can <laughs> do all of a sudden they lose their fingertips and things like that. And uh, well, you know, after hearing that you wanted twenty kids, yeah, twenty kids, I thought, you know, it is usually tradition um, that you you name a child yeah. typically before they're born, but sometimes right after. Well, sometimes you forget. <clears throat> After 20, you're like, oh, that's right. That's part of the process. We got to name this kid. <laughs> right, right, right. So I, I thought it might be um, useful for you to know that there are actually names that are illegal to name your children. When you say illegal, do you mean like if you go and we give birth at like a home birth and we just fill out the card and we send it into the United States Social Security? I think at some point it probably comes back. It yeah, comes they have back, a check like, on it. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. So it's kind of like getting those decal. Uh, license plates. <laughs> right, or vanity or plates. Vanity <laughs> plates, right? It's kind of yeah, like that. I, I suppose it's like that. There, I think there's a few of those that are off limits as well. But uh, no, in general, the United States and the world have a few things in common, whereas uh, names that oh. are illegal. <laughs> but um, in the United States, I thought we'd go with go over some of the ones here in the United States that are illegal. Okay. Yeah, you so, sent me the list, and I'm so... Yeah, yeah, well, don't get ahead. But I, okay. I, I think in general, um, anything that has a number in it, is not allowed. Okay. So if, and it gives an example, and I'm reading from usbirthcertificates.com, so you know it has to be official. Um, if you name your child Monica and replace the I with a one, that's not going to be allowed. Oh, you, it's not like internet handles? I, I, apparently Avatars, not. Avatars, you can't give it an avatar name? No, but I got to think about this. That also means you cannot name your, your child R2-D2 or C-3PO or even BB-8, I suppose, unless you spell it out. So I know that was probably on your short list. I wonder how that works kind of like dbas you know dba like doing business as you mm-hmm. know because like, a lot of businesses out there have names have been taken but you can do a dba like for example lone star very popular name mm-hmm. for lone star so but like you we we had to do like an official doing like, like non-profit as. name yeah, sure. and then we had doing business as lone star i wonder if you could do that with your name so like i can name you robert you know robert you know, token or whatever but then name is yeah. r2d2 <laughs> I, I don't think you can treat yourself like a, a business, I don't think. I but can't. I, maybe, maybe someone will have to correct us after this. I well, don't know. Well, I feel like this is going to be an avalanche because, you know, today everyone's changing their names and pronouns. So it's like, yeah, I don't want to be called Samantha. I want to be called R2-D2. And then the teachers are like, okay, and it just sticks. Yeah, but there's a difference between that and then legal. I don't think legally you can change your name to, according to this anyways. Okay. I'm just trying to help you out with, again, you're going to have to come I'm up with 20 of these. I'm trying to figure out a way to get away with it. So, like, by the time I hit 10 kids, it's like, oh, we got to get more creative with it. Yeah. You know? Well, I think it might be smart to name your, your your child something they can monetize. I don't know. You can name them, like, Dallas Cowboy or... Yeah. You know. How about George Foreman? <laughs> Some, oh, yeah, they're all named George. <laughs> I'm oh, gonna, man. Imagine that. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to continue his name. <laughs> I'm going to name my kid You're Chat the, GPT. Yeah. Something they can monetize. They, they may hate it now, but they'll like it later when all the residuals or are Microsoft rolling. Or Microsoft or something. Yeah, so every something. time they look you up, they can never find you because it's... There you go. Well, here's a list. I have a list here in front of me of a few um, that are illegal here in the United States. Okay. The first two kind of make sense given our history, uh, uh, breaking away from the British monarchy, and that's king and queen. Can't name your kids king or queen, which makes which makes sense, I, I guess. I don't know. These laws were probably written quite some time ago. Uh, and the other one, Jesus Christ. Cannot name your kid that. So just in case that was on your short list. Um, we got one here, just three... I's? I, I, I? So the Roman L, L, L. numeral? Yeah, it looks like maybe the Roman numeral. I would have no idea why, though, on that one, but it is not allowed. So uh, Santa Claus. <laughs> Cannot yeah. name your kid Santa Claus. Um, and this one, I think, is fairly self-evident, but you probably don't want to name your kid Adolf Hitler. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. You're not doing the kid or yourself any favor there. Well, what's funny is on that list, I looked it up, and there's a number sequence. I was like, what's that number sequence mean? Yeah, don't look it up. Yeah, um, there's a few in there I'm actually skipping. Um, you know, well, we are over the air. I'm, 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 I'm going to skip a few I of those, wonder but. if, like, I wonder if Elon Musk has tested this. 
Well, his because, child's like, the, like, name is just letters. I don't think there's any numbers. Man, I think okay. it has a dash in there. Because there's one that's like, it has an at symbol. Like, you can't use the at yeah, symbol. at symbol is not allowed. Nope. So I imagine he's going to put one of those into his kids' names. Like, but it says at right Elon here, Musk. Um, Elon Musk and Grimes uh, named their child charmingly XAEA-XII. And apparently in California, that is allowed. So. Oh, interesting. So you can do dashes. Yes. But I think some of the more entertaining ones <laughs> are the ones from uh, around the world. And, of course, there's a bunch of them here, and we're not going to go through all of them. But I, I, I think it's kind of funny. Uh, in, in, in New Zealand, apparently you cannot name your child Chief Maximus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, although it's, it's a strong I, name. I, like, I mean, I see some of these names you, you, were, you gave me are just <laughs> yeah. ridiculous. Like, I hey, wonder why you can't be named Sarah in Morocco. Well, I, I'm guessing there was probably some, some uh, a president or some official that had a, a, a relationship with someone named Sarah probably back in the 1500s, and it went it went sour, and that's it. No one's naming their name. No one can name their child Sarah after that. It's pretty funny. Like uh, in New Zealand again, sex fruit. Can't name your kid sex fruit. That's unfortunate. I mean, well, you know, you know <laughs> most of this list you're giving me is like someone actually tried this. Oh, I'm sure. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, in Malaysia, you can't name your kid Snake. So, that's yeah. interesting. Um, let's see. Uh, in France, can't do Prince William. Okay. And in Germany, I like where they're going here. You, you can't name your child Osama Bin Laden. Which, again, probably uh, well, the, makes sense. The makes number sense. one here is in New Zealand. Because you look at all, they're like, it's just you can't name your kid Anal? <laughs> like, what's wrong with I that? I know. I mean, come on. What's up with that? I mean, I don't know. That's funny, though. There, some of these say, like, Judas in Sw- Switzerland. It's just like, I don't believe that. Yeah, yeah. But then, Thor, Portugal. You can't name your kid Thor in Portugal. Yeah. I That's lame. Yeah. I don't see why not. I know. I know. <laughs> I wonder who comes up with that, like, who adds new names to the list, especially in the United States, because you know those people at the Social Security is like, oh, my God, you see this kid's name. And it's Dick Buckus. You know, it's like, yeah, that's. Uh, but, uh, well, in, in Saudi Arabia, this is the last one I will go over. You okay. cannot name your child Linda. You guys, I'm saying like <laughs> how nondescript is that? Now, yeah. And again, I think it was probably some something like a, a Saudi prince of some Do sort. You think must they have had a relationship. The name is like there's yeah, it's, up wa- the, it's up in the rafters. Yeah, there's like, only we're one done, guys. Linda in Saudi Arabia, and that was it. my wife, and I had the most money, so you listen to me. That's right. That's what I'm getting at. I think this has something to do with with past. Yeah, you know, I like uh, the anal though. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? A now. Yeah, it's yeah, it's pronounced an all. An all. An all. Yeah, that's it. You gotta be careful. Uh, oh wait, I said that was the last one, but I think this one's funny too. Again, in Portugal, you cannot use the name Tom. That's what I'm saying. Like they got they retire the names. That's how great people are in Portugal. There's a great Tom somewhere. Oh yeah. Can you imagine the underground? Like, what's his name? Oh, that's Tom. Oh, we can't even say it. The man who must must not be named. Harry Potter kind of stuff. Like, you can't you can't say his name? It's illegal, dude. Oh, but uh, that's funny. You know that some poor clerk has to go through all that and run the baby check. And... Uh, these days it's probably through a computer. But, yeah, somebody probably has to double check the yeah. computer. But I did, I did not know that there were actually names that were illegal. I mean, it makes sense. I think you have to have some sort of rules in place. Uh, some of these, obviously, across well, the world are silly. I but... wonder, you know, like Social Security, people always say, like, it's easy to just identity theft. So if you named yourself, like, Jeff Bezos. I'm, yeah, I don't think that's illegal, no. Well, that's what I'm saying, but then it's like, hey, where's my... You know, where's my money? I'm Jeff Bezos. Well, I think the, the problem there is the fact that you're trying to steal someone's identity. That's where the illegal part comes in. You can name whatever well, you want. Well, it's accident. I mean, it's think about how many how many guys out there are named Michael Jordan. And they're probably true. in their 50s. That's true. You know, and their parents named them that before Michael Jordan was Oh, I would hate that. Oh. My name's Michael Jordan. Oh, it's terrible. Well, stick- if you hate your name, let us know what it is so we can make fun of you. Uh, send us a message on Facebook. Like, you have the most ridiculous name. Yeah. Well, like, I was telling Holly, so I'm Richard Price Schisler IV. And so I, solid. And I, so solid. I was like, we're, if we have a boy, we're naming Richard Price Schisler V. And she's like, you're not a legacy person, Richard. Like, you're not a king. And I was like, well, you know, if it's a female, we're still going to name it on the birth certificate. That way I, I can at least pass the name on and say I did it. And then you can we can call her whatever you want to call her to her face, but on the birth certificate, you're not royalty. Yeah. Well, you could have fooled me. I'm the fourth. Someone before me thought it was important enough to continue on the name. Yeah. So, you may not be royalty, but it is important to somebody. Well, family gatherings were always fun because you had Dick, Rick, Richard, and Richie. Yeah. You know, at one point, <laughs> and then I was a little Richie, 
for a while. And then Oh, thank you for that. I'm gonna have to make note of that. Little yeah. Richie. And then if you're around my mother, don't call me little Ricky. She hated that. So apparently a family member when I was born made this huge poster. It's like welcome home, little Ricky. And my mom there's a picture of her holding the ba- holding me. <laughs> She just looks so like mad about it, and I, I asked her. I was like, "Why are you mad about someone calling me Little Ricky?" She's like, I just hate that name. I hate it. And I was like, "What did Little Ricky ever do to you?" But you never know. People people really hate names sometimes. Yeah, no doubt. What What is the name you hate the most? Like you just hear it and you're like, "Oh my gosh, man!" I don't know. I don't know that I've ever really thought about that. I don't know. Samuel. Samuel is kind of a name. I'm like, ugh. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't know. We just lost a listener, yeah. man. I'm just kidding. I mean, <laughs> I don't think there's a name out there. Like that Jebediah I, would that be I have hilarious. Some kind of reaction to. Like if people have the old biblical names would be great. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll get back to you with on that one. I, I don't know. I haven't haven't thought about that in like who like Abraham. Solid. Yeah. I got no problems. With Abraham. I mean, imagine Hercules. Someone named their kid Hercules. <laughs> and he's really small. Or just yeah, not strong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Poor guy. I think this is this. You've given some really good information here, little little Ricky. Little Ricky, yeah. Oh, I, mean, I think this is going to be a banger of a show. <laughs> you know, this may actually go down as as um, the red wedding of our shows. You know, I mean, well, with, okay. except without the, the the wedding and without the murder and the stuff. Arrows. But like, this is going to be the show that everybody yeah. talks about. This is the little Ricky episode. Oh my gosh, I had no idea. <laughs> We're getting some good insight here. Well, yeah, names are names, man, and they names. stick with you. I, well, can you? How easy is it to change your name? <laughs> Uh, I don't think it's actually that difficult. Because according to my wife, it's impossible uh, because she won't change her last name. <laughs> Shout out, I'm calling you out. Well, I don't think it's that difficult. I do think it's a certain amount of work from what I've heard. I like my name, so I'm not necessarily Well, her excuse is well, she's going through nursing school. She's like, if I change it, I have to change it again. And it's all on the state license board. And it's like, I have to do all the stuff. So I'm going to do it after I finish all my schooling. And I go, Makes okay. sense. Yeah, sure. Makes sense. Well, staying on this theme of children, oh yeah, we've, children, got, we've yeah. got a children, a uh, children, a child named Isaac Ortman. Okay, and he's only fourteen years old. Okay, and he is from Minnesota. Okay, and I'm just wondering, fourteen years ago, if when his parents named Isaac, if they thought he was going to be famous for this, and he has now made the news last month because he has now slept over one thousand consecutive days outside. Yeah, you sent me. I'm gonna pull a picture for the, the yeah. audience to see if you're on Facebook. You know YouTube and stuff. So that's him in his. That is him chilling out. Look at that. So and now they're in Minnesota. So you can imagine, it's not like it's fairly uh, warm. Yeah. I mean, especially this time of year, we're talking zero below so zero sleeping. temperatures. Yeah. He's yeah. a Boy Scout, so yeah, it's, you know, he likes camping. Clearly. Clearly, yes. Um, it's, it says that recently, though, he crept into his house in the middle of the night because he had spotted a black bear in the backyard. Now, is he trying to do like a world record thing, or is he just like, hey, I just like sleeping so outside? So he, he says that he's not, but there apparently is another kid out there that's sleeping. He's been like, he's got like 1,200 days, and he's like, oh, no, I'm not doing this for any sort of notoriety, but after the black bear left, guess what he did? Right back out into the sun. <laughs> like, I ain't going out there. Yeah. Well, do you think it's one of those things where, like, I know some people love camping, but right when you get inside and you take your shower, your hot shower, you're like, oh, why did I ever leave? Exactly. But he doesn't want to leave. Yeah. And Apparently, this started during COVID when he was looking for something to do, something fun to do. And his dad said, I got a great idea. Why don't you go sleep outside in sub-zero temperatures? So his dad the, really hates this kid. Uh, well, I'm not going to go. I think underlying well, story of it is he goes, I'm so sick of you. Well, it, it Just actually. Just go outside. It actually says, my dad's like, you should go sleep outside this weekend. And I'm like, I'm, I'm speaking from the 14-year-old. Yeah. Yeah, sure, why not? Sounds like fun, Isaac recalls. Oh, yeah, his dad was kicking him outside. Can you imagine? So, you know how, like, there's movies out there and there's also stories. Like, you have that one kid who, like, won't take off. You know, everyone had, like, that one kid that wouldn't take off their bathing suit. You ever heard these stories where it's like, you know, that, like, out of the five kids, there's you have that one kid who's like, I won't take off the tutu. You know, I have to wear this every day. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I know you what I'm talking about. about yes, like, they yes. have these behavioral habits. Like, they don't want to Correct. give up. And maybe Correct. this is one of those things where he's like, you know what? This is what I want to do. But I think typically that's with, like, small children. This guy's 14. He, yeah, he's getting he's, there. He, he's tough. I mean, at some point, he's going to discover girls and whatnot and not be into this Oh, you don't want to stay outside with me? Mm. Mm. Oh, were you ta- I thought you were asking no, me. No, <laughs> no, I'm talking about with his future girlfriends. He's like, oh, you, you don't want to stay outside? So oh. here, here we go. It says, at this point, Isaac has no specific end date in mind, and he's even entertaining the idea of sleeping outside throughout college well that will pretty much guarantee he's not gonna have a girlfriend right there well his dad's probably happy to have to pay board 
<laughs> right, right, just some books yeah. and intuition. Man, he says his dad says he's just having fun with it. But I don't know, man. If you had a kid, would you let him do this? Maybe he's practicing on being homeless. There, oh, he's practicing. Yeah, like yeah, practicing. It goes back to our, our first yeah. episode uh, conversation. You know, he's a survivalist. He's Fourteen, and he's he's gonna have an app so he can go sell drugs and make yeah. money. Like, so like you I told about. you, man, apps are wonderful things today. Yeah, he probably Anyways, has. What, he probably put an outlet in one of his trees. You know, he's got his electrical outlet. I don't know that picture. It didn't look like there's any power or anything there. Well, I mean, okay, let me ask you this. Why is this really a story? Because it'd be one thing if he was camping out in the middle of nowhere, and it's like, yeah, he's just living living on, uh, off the land. But it sounds to me he's a football throw away from the house. He is, yeah. He so is. it's like, okay, cool, like, go camping, I guess. Like, and then, I, I don't think, really think this is a big deal. Why, why are we reading so, this so, on today? So are you saying com. that you will allow at least one or maybe— more than one of your future 20 children to sleep outside. You're not if they care. wanted to. And like, okay. But I'm saying it'd be one thing of the achievement of sleeping outside if they're far away. And, like, the parents wouldn't like that. They're like, I can't call you. I can't get to you. But it's like, no, this kid just sleeps outside. And it's like, all right, cool. Like, so do dogs. Like, not well, a big deal. I, I, think, I think that's probably true if he's done it for a night or two. But after... Hundreds and hundreds and now over a thousand like, I nights. I remember... Distance really doesn't matter anymore. This is a thing, and it's kind of crazy. We built a tree house when I was younger, Yeah, and I loved it. And I slept out there all the time. But I was still right next to the house. So it really wasn't that big of a deal. Like, do you think he doesn't shower? Like, he doesn't come inside at all? Oh, no, I think... Yeah, no, no. He's coming inside. He's doing things. This is just a bit to sleep outside. It says at one time he had a fever of 102 degrees, but still went out there and did it. He yeah. said this, the swinging hammock made him feel nauseated, but he, he stayed out. I know, man. Kids d- devoted to it. Yeah, I would send them to a psych ward. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now you yeah, just said I, that you'd let your kids do yeah, it. Yeah, I'd send them to a psych ward. I guess you. I guess letting them and then making them are two different. And I would things. freak people out. Like I don't know. I have no idea who that is. <laughs> like they just started sleeping outside our house. No idea who it is. Oh man. Well, kids do grow up. You know, they go from babies when you have to name them. Yeah. And then they turn into you know fourteen year olds that want to stay outside, and then they start. Somewhere around that time, they start having their own language. So I have a 15-year-old daughter, and language words that they use start to change like around slang, this time. You're saying? Slang, you're okay, Yeah, right. man. So like, we'll be at the dinner table, and I'll make dinner, and she's like, oh, Dad, this, this hamburger's bussin'. Bussin'? Bussin'. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, I don't know if that's good. And you say thank you. Yeah, that's right. Thank mm-hmm. you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Or something is fire. Like, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so, but it's weird, and it, e- and it even goes into texting. Now, you know, my daughter has a phone, so she'll text with me. Oh, I don't even want to talk, talk about texting. I mean, that would confuse, because oh, I, yeah. I confuse people when I send texts, because I just have spelling corrections all over the place. Okay, so this, this, br- this brings me to my next topic here, then. Are you one of these full punctuation texters, or are you using a lot of shorthand and slang? I mean... I- Whatever autocorrect sends, that's what I send. And it might not be what I meant, but it's just like, it is what it is. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I, I, I think that's probably anyone over the age of 35, if I had to guess, is probably using more punctuation in their text messages than some of the younger people, because they ain't using any. Um, I, I know somebody who was actually texting uh, someone who was significantly younger than, than this person, and they replied back with the one answer, sure. But they replied back, sure, period. And the younger person interpreted that differently oh. because there was a because oh, yeah. there was we, punctuation. We talk about that. I mean, my wife gets mad at me all the time when I get home. Like, why are you mad at me? Yeah, it's like, what, it's what are you like talking about? The way you sent that text, it sounded like you were judging me on that. I'm like, what? Yeah, I mean, but well, what apparently, text though, are we talking about? If, if my friend had just sent sure, it hey. would have been fine. But sure with a period was interpreted differently by some by this it. younger generation. It. it came across as Sterner. condescending. Yeah, yeah so like, sure, whatever. And of course this person had my friend had no idea. People will read way too much into yeah. text. I yeah. think well that's what uh, the way of communication, especially with uh, what you said was all the slang texting and it's like well, WBU. I'm like, what am I what what? Yeah. And my wife sent that scene, I was like, okay. Awesome. So, well, uh, I'm a horrible texter. Okay, so this this is this is interesting because I'm I'm somewhat of a, a full punctuation texter. I think over the years I've kind of gotten away f- and I do less and less. But I know for a while there, I mean, it's capitals, commas, yeah, periods. Yeah. I try to still do some of that, but I've gotten a little bit lax. But I think we need to take a little test here. Okay. Dick. I think we need to take a little test and find out uh, how good you are at interpreting some of these. Um, is that what they call texting acronyms? shorthands? Is it acronyms? Texting shorthands, acronyms. Okay. I don't know. 
Yeah, abbreviation, texting abbreviations. Okay, go for it. All okay, right. so I, I've got a website here, uh, Grammarly.com, and it's got like the top 25. I'm, we're not going to go through all of them. Okay. Some of them are really, are like LOL. Everybody knows Laugh that one. Loud. Laugh out loud, right? right? So we're not going to go through some of those. Point. Yeah, so, but like, how about this one? TBH. To be honest. All right, that's right. To be honest, the phrase is used to indicate that you're expressing your true opinion. TBH. And the example, I love this. I'm not a fan of Jello. It's way too jiggly, TBH. I think there's one that I still don't know. I'm trying to remember what it is. Like, uh, well, it's more of a it's more of a, a written word instead of texting. It's like your your is yours is like S I C. Yes. Like like brackets mm -hmm. sick. I always like is that C in comments? Is that what that is? But like, there's never any like a yeah. section. Yeah, I don't know. to a... refer it to. And I'm like, I don't understand why reporters say that. Like, how am I supposed to see in the comments? But there's no comment section to see it in. Yeah. So I, I feel disconnected with the world. How about OMW? On my way. Look at you. That's, that's easy. Okay. All right. Because it's funny, on my phone, if I do OMW, it automatically spells it, spells it all out. Oh, wow. It won't, it, let, it me, already it won't let me do OMW. It, wow. It'd say on my way. And I was like, man, is it trying to say that I'm stupid? No, it's, that's crazy that there's some sort of algorithm in your phone now that knows shorthand. Oh, you, you should see the it's words crazy. it autocorrects for me. Like if I use the like the four letter word mm -hmm. it's it's automatically duck yeah it's like it's never duck why are you cre it's never yeah. duck i never say the word and duck. <laughs> it's other things too especially like when i use there or where yeah it's always like it always auto changes it to the wrong way to use it and i'm like no 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 no, <laughs> no i really meant it this way now, trust me I, you know when you text those grammar police people to like Especially like my mother my mother would be like you use that incorrectly richard yeah you I'm know like, you're gonna pull up to the house one of these days and Holly's going to come up and go, look, a duck. And you're like, that's not uh, what like I meant that, yeah. in that message. Dang it. Yeah. All right. How about O-T-O-H? I have no idea. Ah, that one. We first, first one we got you with. That's on the other hand. I don't even say that in general. Huh? On the other hand. Mm -hmm. All right. How about this one? N-V-M. N-V-M. Never mind. There you go. In the example, can you buy more ketchup? Oh, NVM just found the bottle in the door. <laughs> like, if you sent me a text about like that, I'd be like, get out of here. Like, I don't care. Uh, Put you on block. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some of these are funny, though. I mean, obviously, I think like NBD. I think that no was, big deal. There you go. That one's yeah. pretty easy. A lot of these they've, they've almost become part of our language now. Um, I mean, it's like LOL. This one just popped up here. I mean, that's a verb now. Oh, I LOL'd. <laughs> like, I literally did. It's funny. I don't know. Let's see here. <laughs> uh, LMK. Let me know. All right. So I, so think, I think you're ready. I, I got the general. I, th I think you're ready, I got man, the for, general for, for kids and, and, and the texting language. I don't know if But you... I don't use it. I'm not in practice. You're... I don't have kids. You have kids, so it's like, is that just a standard way they communicate every single text? Or do you think they text their friends differently than they text you? I, I, I think that my daughter... Like, they're not sending and son eggplants and stuff the, like that. I have that... not received one of those yet. <laughs> doesn't that mean... I forgot what that means. What does that mean? Uh, we're probably still over the air at this point, yeah. so... Um, but no, they, I, I would think that they probably communicate differently with their friends than they do with, with me. That, um, that's got to be so funny when you accidentally, like you say, like you do not just the sure period, but like you use the eggplant because you think it's fun. And they're like, Dad, Dad, don't, don't send that. <laughs> no, I don't think I'm sending that to my dad. Like, because I think there was even one where like I was reading the other day is you couldn't do certain emojis together like on Twitter and stuff because it meant something. So they had to ban it because it was something really bad. Wow. Like, it, like Elon's all over it, man. Something like that. Oh, wow. I had not heard that. Yeah. I, may have to, I may have to look that up. We'll bring that to show. Well, but it's like, it's, it's in the group they put it in. You know, it's not just like one emoji's bad. It's mm. like a, if you put it it's in a, a series. Yeah, it's together. a series. And it means something like really mean it kind of reminds me a little bit of like back in the beeper days this is probably before your time and you could like write out something uh, yeah, to, like hello yeah or, and you turn it upside down and yeah. like boobs or something yeah. <laughs> no. boobies we all thought that was so funny so yeah. great yeah anyway <laughs> beeper days <laughs> yeah beepers gosh that's terrible i never had one i don't see why anyone if you're not a doctor would need one i yeah or drug dealer that was always the joke right well, doctor uh, or drug dealer yeah yeah. I mean, that makes more sense to me. Yeah. All right. Well, I think it's a pretty good chance for us to take a break yeah. here, man. Yeah. All right. So we got children's names, illegal names, and then we got silly 
things that you text each other, I guess. Yeah, I was just I was just making sure that you were prepared um, with your twenty children to make sure. That and the sad thing is, I'm them. never going to use this stuff. I'll just still autocorrect everything incorrectly to people, and people are like, well, "What are you even saying right now?" I'm like, "Oh, I didn't even read that. Sorry." <laughs> All right, we'll be back, guys. Like dreadlocks, a red fox and ripple. We pass part of simples and smash the artists in you. The saga continues. This I won't get into because they listen in Mondays at noon to hear Conroe news from local nonprofits, businesses, upcoming events, Conroe Park events, news stories, and information that matters to you with your host, Margie Taylor of Taylorized PR. For more information about being a guest, visit IRLoneStar.com slash Conroe Culture. Welcome back to Audience of One with Andrew and Dick. You mentioned something earlier, Dick, about your um, wife being a nurse. Yeah, she's a nurse. Yeah, she might be interested she's in this. She's a hero. She, she is. She's a hero. An essential worker, some might say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she might be interested in this next segment. Okay. So uh, this caught my eye uh, the other day. Apparently, there is a, a nurse um, who's really, as it says, cashing in on her courses. No pun intended. Or maybe pun completely intended. It says here that a California nurse has claimed that she's earned $2 million for her class notes from school after listing them for sale on Etsy. I bet Etsy was never expecting that to be sold on Etsy. It's like, <laughs> right. Uh, well, you know what? I, that t- makes total sense. I wonder if it's illegal for her to do that, though. Uh, but I don't think it is. I don't think so because it's not as if she's selling tests or answers to tests, she's just selling her notes. Yeah. Um, and it says here she's 28 years old, Stephanie Beggs. Uh, she began selling her notes when she graduated from nursing school, and that now she's reached a very sudden and unintentional level of infamy, and I can imagine so. Um, but basically, um, during the pandemic, it, she was making videos, and people were requesting her, hey, can you, like, giving tips yeah. on, 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 while going to school. Because the NCLEX and, is a huge... Thing you have to study for. Yeah. yeah, and I think she was just basically saying, hey, this is how um, I study, blah, 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 and she kept getting requests for her actual handwritten notes. Yeah. And she went, My wife got you know what? many calls Sure, about why that not? And, yeah, but has she sold it to the tune of $2 million? Yeah, I should tell her that. I should be like, hey, you still have all that stuff you wrote down? Incredible, right? Yeah. So it says she, she charges anywhere from $2 for a single study sheet up to $30 and $40 for a whole packet on particular subjects. I don't know. Is, I guess it's not illegal. And it, I, I, would you consider this cheating? I, You know what's funny is I think it depends on the course. Because for the NCLEX, if I remember correctly, it's not a standardized test in the sense of everyone takes the same test. It gives you different questions for everybody. And if I... If I remember correctly, it's one of those new... The new NCLEX is like a, a smart test where yeah. it starts giving you questions, and it might give you harder ones depending if you're getting them wrong, or it might give you easier ones if you're getting them wrong. And it tries to hmm. test your overall... You well, no, no, but it, if, even if you're wrong, because it tries to see where your barometer is on your knowledge of nursing. Because there's not... Like, yeah. you're not taking a test about you know nursing for legs. It's like an overall course, so it's like you can't be 100% right all the time. So it tries to make sure you're at least right most of the time. Interesting. Uh, which is very, you know... Gives me big confidence for nurses. <laughs> well, and that see, that's another thing is but I would think I would like to know that my nurses were dedicated enough yeah, to take see, their own sense. to take their own notes. I think well, not that not that it's not that it's cheating, but I think part of becoming so, a nurse is is dedicating yourself to the point. <clears throat> excuse me, where you are able to take your own no- notes but, and immerse yourself. And but if you're, you're also relying on somebody comprehending else's, information. Everyone does it differently. Yeah, and there's always that one person. Usually, it's a girl who's like, "I made four thousand flashcards," and you know, you're kind of sitting there in the back going, "Man, I wish I had four thousand flashcards. That would be really helpful." You know, I need someone to do this, and and I think that you always have that kind of person in class growing up. They always like went above and beyond, use highlighters for their notes, and it's just like, yeah. I know, like I know in co- in college, I took a law class, and the, one of my friends who recommended me taking it 
was like, hey, I got my notes if you want them. And I'm like, yeah. And it saved me because I'd never had to study for anything. I could just read their notes. I didn't even have to go to class. See? Okay. I just look at the notes, and I'm like, I'm good. Uh, but that that's because I'm, a, I'm a, not a good person. But, <laughs> you know, it's just kind of like, well, this stuff I totally get. Because that, that, that test, if you don't know about that test, if you fail it, you get like one more try. Yeah, you and if you, that, fa- if you fail it again, done. you can't take, take it, it for like ten years. I think it oh is. Oh my goodness! Or something like that. Wow. And the, and I want to say the NCLEX is for registered nurses, so it's not like every level of like you know LVN, you know right. PA, all that kind of stuff. Like this is the wow. Yeah, it's That's serious. A, so you, well, you know, it kind of reminds me of of when I went to college. I, I have a, a my wife a, passed on her first try. Of course she did. Yeah. It's great. You need to sell your notes. <laughs> well, Make I, some money. When I went to school, I, I got a, a degree in mass communication, and in order to, from uh, Southwest Texas State University and San Marcos, Texas, um, at that time, you had to take and pass a test called the GSP. That's the grammar, spelling, and punctuation. Ooh, I failed that. Yeah. So I thought, how hard could that be? It's grammar, it's spelling, it's punctuation. I am a college student. This shouldn't be a big deal. I so I went in, I took the test, and I failed it. Now, it was one of these tests where you could only take it twice. If you failed it twice, you could not major in mass communications. Oh, wow. So they actually you had, had some to make you change your degree. I figured, like, you're paying on time. You're good. And I failed, I failed it with, like, a 68, and, and 70 is passing. Oh, and I thought, oh, that's... man. And it, this is one of these tests that was um, on purpose tricky. And yeah. they give you like four different versions of one word and say which one's the one that's spelled correctly. Or, or, and it's like, yeah. oh my God, three that's of them are incorrect. It's, it's difficult. So I got this study guide. I got this book. I said, man, this is like for real. I'm going to have to do this. And I studied and I studied and I studied. And, I, and I'm nervous. I go and take it the next time. Passed with a 72. Didn't make much of a difference well, to passed. study. But I passed. Yeah. And I did, have, I did have some friends that were in that program. Um, and they make you take it, I think, before the end of your sophomore year, yeah. uh, because you have to change majors. And uh, they they did not pass. And thanks for all your money. Yeah, and well, they had to change their major. So and credits are wasted. So yeah, so I, yeah, that is. I'm I'm familiar with these tests that you you only get yeah. a couple shots and, and you're well, I done. Think I I wonder. I want to say this lady's gonna get in trouble at one point because the reason I say is because the NCLEX and the companies that put on these tests have their own study material that you can purchase. And they're like, hey, you're getting in on our monopoly here, selling these books right. and selling right. the study guides. Unless so. they get smart and they partner with her. Hmm. Well, apparently she's caught on because she was listed on Forbes's, uh, 2023 Forbes's 30 under 30 list. I'm not going to lie. To be on that list and what she did, I feel like it's uh, there's probably not a lot of cool people on that list that they think this is cool. I'm not on that list. Because when I think of Forbes, you know, 30 under 30, I think of like, oh, man, I made Facebook. Well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> it's like, oh, you're, imagine being in a room. What did you do? Oh, I sold my study notes online. I mean, that's cool, but I mean, like, is it top 30 under 30? What did like, you do? Well, I cured cancer. What did you do? I sold my notes. Nah, I sold my notes. <laughs> well, I mean, no, I mean, I, I'm not taking it away from her, her achievements, but it's just to me when someone tells me you're on the list of 30 top 30 in well, Forbes, think- you think of somebody like, oh, I developed a cure for this kind of thing. Right. I'm just a really smart kid. Right. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, I just took advantage of a system that like I was I was really good at highlighting stuff. <laughs> well, apparently it's in demand. She's making money off of it, man. Which is uh, good. Well, I which is good. I think it well, because the more nurses that get help, because I know this this test is hard. Yeah. So it's like whatever way it takes you to pass. There you go. Because you know, did you did you know recently speaking of nurses, is like I think Texas and Florida, like this huge thing came out about a month or two months ago where all these nurses weren't even graduates. They they faked it. Did you hear about this? I have. I've heard it with doctors too. Yeah, it's nuts because like they hire somebody to go take the NCLEX and they pretend that they're them. Oh no, I heard something different. Just ordering fake degrees is what I thought you meant. Just basically, yeah, well, completely th- fake degrees. Well, I think some of it was like that because certain schools would be fake and they'd be like, "Yeah, they pass," but they still had to take the NCLEX, which is separate from a school. Okay. So the NCLEX is like monitored by, like especially in Texas, is monitored by the state nursing board mm. of texas so it's it's not like lone star college gives you the NCLEX. wow it's like you have to go through this it's like taking the sats it's like okay. a different company that operates it and that probably helps legitimize it and keep, yeah. keep out the uh but the riffraff well the one i'm thinking of is nope this was this guy actually 
um, sold fake degrees online so much so that he had an office and a phone number and a staff there that would answer the phone when people would call to verify degrees. Yeah. They'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, Dick Schistler here. Yep, he got his degree in uh, neuroscience. Yeah, neuroscience in 2002. He's yeah, good to he's go. He's a doctor. He sure is. PhD. Yeah. Well, he's just a podiatrist, but still yeah. a doctor nonetheless. Lit him glove Crazy. up. Yeah, so that, that's the... Get uh, him the chainsaw. <laughs> that's... That's the uh, that's the one I was thinking of. Yeah, but it's it's again you don't consider it cheating. I don't know. It's really close to cheating, but well, connecting um, it to I know the next topic you want to do the GPT stuff. That's how I'm going to connect. People have been hearing a lot about the GPT, which is basically (laughs) an online computer that you can enter anything you want to ask and it'll tell you stuff. Yeah. So okay. Well, let's step back. So yes, that was where I was going to transition to. So if if I'm a this isn't cheating, take my NCLEX. Is Chat GPT considered cheating? And and so basically, for those of you who don't know what Chat GPT is, it's basically a chat bot, a very very advanced chat bot. Um, and if you don't know what a chat bot is, maybe it's easier to um, give an example of one rather than describing it. Um, have you ever been on a website? Maybe you're shopping, or maybe it's your your bank. And a little window will pop up and say, how may I help you? And you go down and you chat with them and you say, hey, look, I'm looking to order uh, checks because yeah. I write a lot of checks. And I can't find it. It'll... And then it'll pop you're, up like, a you're response. Really not talking to anybody. You're not talking to anybody. That's a chat bot. Well, what chat GPT is, it's a second generation chat bot from chat GP3, I think is what it was. And it's, it's an extremely advanced version of that. And I think that the, the developers have hooked it up to... Um, things like Reddit and just had it crawl over the internet for years and just basically just storing mm-hmm. information and and, and um, that way it becomes AI smart. Um, what's interesting about ChatGPT though is it's not connected to the internet. So they cut it off from the internet. It's done all of its learning. So say they disconnected it in December of 2022. It's not going to know anything that's happened since then. So if you ask them who won the Super Bowl you know, in 2023, it's not going to know. But this thing is massively advanced, and you can type in anything, and it will speak to you in a manner that's very human-like. Mm-hmm. It's very scary. I mean, and you can you can use it for things like, look, I got leftover chicken and some pasta sauce. What do I do with it? And they'll give you some recipes. That's great. But you can imagine if you're a student and you have an assignment and you need to know who wrote the Declaration of Independence, blah, 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 it will spit out something very, very eloquent to you. And... I mean, that's kind of like worse than selling your notes online. This is literally somebody doing the work for you. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I guess you don't have much on ChatGPT. No, I, I think it's it's one of those things that it's, it's interesting that someone built it, and it's interesting that people are testing and pushing in different circumstances. Like the whole that, – that, that example you gave of, oh, I have extra chicken, I have extra sauces or whatever, and it gives you a recipe. I think that's wonderful because people – that's a useful thing because you're Absolutely, not wasting yeah. it. Yeah. But you know, if I have to do a, a you know fifteen hundred word report on you know the Declaration of Independence, I go, hey, write it for me, and it will. And and I think that's great. You should go, just go for it. See if you get caught. Well, apparently, speaking of that, uh, there was a so, college student, and maybe this guy needs to be on the Forbes under thirty. Uh, Edward Tian, a twenty-two year old Princeton University student, he's built an app to detect whether or not text is written by ChatGPT. You think he? You think all the kids like him? He's like the guy in class that gets all the good grades and kills the curve. Yeah. Right. So he's he's liked by no one, but apparently the teachers really love. Well, him. I don't know why you'd be in school and trying to be educated while you're like, oh, I'll just use Chat GPT to solve my math homework. Like that's kind of useless. I, well, <laughs> so. I mean, if it's going to get you the grade, no, I mean, you don't. I mean, edu- like to, to be educated, like that's important to learn that stuff. It so. absolutely is, but I think if you're not really caring I mean, about being educated yeah i mean you're talking <laughs> to 13 year old me and all i have to do is go uh-huh. to it's it's entirely totally too easy it. to do i yeah. totally get it but uh, apparently this guy's website or his app um you can just plug in a piece of text yeah and it will go through and i guess it detects nuances i mean they have that today about it well yeah it will detect nuances about the the, the paragraph and say yeah this is most likely written by ai by the way this is not the way a, a human would talk which i think is pretty sweet but still it's not 100 percent Unless the person admits that no, they use prob- ChatGPT. No, it probably isn't uh, 100%. But I think, you know, it's it's interesting this guy's felt the need. Yeah, we probably need to regulate this stuff. So the, the creator of ChatGPT, Sam Altman, uh, is, says that he thinks that AI like this could get potentially scary and that regulation is is imminent. Really, that you're going to have to have I something. Guess. I mean, I think it's also, you know, a lot of people don't realize where they could use that in their world. And kind of like... 
you said like if you go on Amazon do a chat bot because you want to like return something more likely than not you're not chatting with a real person but yeah the the person who's typing it is like oh I didn't even think about that because I just want to return my item I don't care if I talk to a human or not sure well but, I think some of the people that might be really scared of this is Google wouldn't it just basically eliminate not, the search engine not necessarily I mean because uh, because chat chat GBT is not giving you results of like Hey, give me the top five articles based off of this. It's like, I don't. It could if you asked well, it that way, that, though. I know Microsoft has inter, uh, got it with its Bing mm -hmm. search engine, mm -hmm. so it might be a better search engine. But I mean, Google just needs a better search engine. Well, I think it's the fact that it communicates with you in in a very human like way that's a lot more palatable than a Google search return well, with just like a couple Surrey. of things. Like, hey, Surrey. Oh, sorry if I said that. It is, now but no, but it, it is similar to that. Hey, Alexa. It, it seems like, yeah. <laughs> fart. <laughs> it seems like every time I ask Siri or Alexa for something, um, it just says, here's what I found on the web. I'm like, oh, I could have done that. No, no, I no, you, talk no, to me, not. talk to me. So you're what? talking about lonely people? No, 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 no. Although I think we, 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 we are crossing another bridge there. What's wrong lonely people <laughs> trying to talk with chat, chat GPT? It's a nice Sunday night. Well, I think I think. Um, What's your favorite wine, Chat GPT? <laughs> you're, you're okay. So you're hitting on something here too. Um, apparently, that people have reported that their 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 experiences with Chat GPT are quote mostly good, but in some cases they can get talk, kind of weird. Talk to me, dirty Chat GPT. That uh, yeah. That that That's over creepy. time. As you like as you communicate and as the conversations get longer and longer, that the t that the uh, the algorithms in there start to um, adapt to the way you're talking, and that, that it's almost as if that Chat GPT is almost being a little bit inappropriate, or trying too hard to be human like. And people reported back, this is really awkward now. And yeah, yeah, just, I, oh I found gosh. this in this article somewhere. Babies. Well, I don't know, man. I mean, it bunch seems to cry babies. <laughs> Like, I, I think it'd be hilarious if you go to someone's history and it's like, I want to kill my mother. How do I do that chat GPT and what it t tells you? Uh, hopefully it would say, you need to go get help and it would report you to the police. Well, that's not a real chat GPT, bro. <laughs> if you're a real chat GPT, you'd be like, yo, this is the best way. Where do you live? What's the coordinates? Let's see. Where can we bury the body? You know, like that kind of stuff. That's the information I want to know from my AI. Well, this says that the responses can sometimes be snarky and argumentative to overly emotional. That's kind of what yeah. I was getting at. You were kind of going in the sexy time way, but I was just saying. That, that just, well, we're talking about you being lonely. You know, I, no, you're talking about no, being lonely. You, yeah. You're the one talking about being lonely. No, you're the one who's talking about ta asking Siri and this, that, and the other for romantic advice. I'm just, I'm just reporting a story. Yeah. I'm a newsman. Okay. Oh, okay. That, that's I, I report the news. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, man. Microsoft explained in a blog post last Wednesday that long chats, like I was saying, can confuse the model, which may at times try to respond or reflect the tone in which it is being asked to provide responses that can lead to a style that we did not intend. Are they? Are you telling Weird, me man. Matthew Broderick war games going on? Uh, I'm not sure I no know that No one, one wins, or what would the end of that? I don't know. No, no I don't think I've seen no that No one wins. No one wins. See, this is what happens when you have a, a co-host that used to do movie reviews uh, on the radio show. You've seen far, far too many movies and far more than... I want to know what it was. It's like, because, you know, the, you know, War Games is based off of, like, an AI that its whole purpose of existing was doing war game theory. Oh, and cool. somehow okay. it got connected to the actual bomb networks oh gosh and it's like for t like it's wait there was a michael crichton book like that I think. yeah and so Dadgummit, which one is it? i can't remember and of now. course matthew broderick who is some little kid basically tells the machine like no one can win so there's no point of playing well which, another another which is great yeah well another offshoot here is apparently there's a sci-fi magazine Oh, you no, know, you know what's crazy to me about, like, I know exactly where you're going with this, because it's, you know, people are going to be submitting ch chat GPTs, That's everything. For everything, yep. And, like, because I, I was reading... Hey, chat GPT, write me a story. Write me a song, write, you know, that kind of there stuff. And uh, I think it's it's fun, but I don't think it's actually a, a true art. Of course not. So, but people that are doing this are not caring about art. They're not caring about passing... Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, you're saying trying the, the sci-fi editor is probably getting 
so bunch of stuff. It's exactly right. So it says uh, the editor of a sci-fi magazine said he's getting f- uh, flooded with plagiarized short stories of uh, as AI tools take off. Yeah. And basically, this is one of these these editors that that does fan fiction and they they write stories and then they publish them. Blah blah blah. And I all think, of a sudden, he's getting all these just bombarded. I think recently, like the with stuff that basically all someone, sound, sounds uh, the same, kind of like the violin players. No, the world uh, world leader, I think from Israel, basically said, "Hey, Chat GBT wrote my intro," and he let everyone know after he said it. Like after he did the intro to like the meeting or whatever, okay. like some, some I don't know what the World Economic Forum maybe I don't know who was this. Who did you say? Some some leader from Israel, huh? Was giving a speech and then he like at the end of the speech he's like, hey, just to let you know, the very beginning of I don't my know speech how I feel about that. Was, I don't know if I'd be like, hey, thanks for being honest or well, he no, he was really making mad. a point. Yeah, okay. He was making a point, so it wasn't just like. It, was he there trying to show off how advanced the the, the technology had gotten to where look, no one would have even known if yeah. I didn't say anything. Yeah. I bet if you went back and compared some of his previous speeches, though, it probably wouldn't follow stylistically along the same yeah, lines. Yeah, but I, I mean, bet. but you're talking about people don't listen to his speeches anyway, so it's like somebody does. He's would you say he's the prime minister or something? I mean, Somebody's have you listening. heard Biden speak? Like no one listens. It's like <laughs> no one cares, man. Just get up, including got, Biden. I think you got five but... minutes. Just get off the stage. Go to the next. Bring on the, the other person. Let's bring on the other person. Let's talk about the hot dogs. Oh man! So part of the problem here is this. Um, this sci-fi publisher pays money for this. It pays up to twenty five hundred bucks if they accept your story. For a good story, yeah. yeah. So I mean, you can just sit there and just pound it, pound it, pound it, and send story after story after story. And if half of them get chosen, maybe only a couple, you're making bucks. So I think this is definitely. Well, they're probably going to call that kid who made that app that detects AI written stories. Yeah, so. that's probably what they're doing. Yeah. yeah, that's probably exactly. That's what, what I would doing. do. Well, too bad I can't write. I wonder an if app. I can replace you with a with an AI Andrew. Yeah, AI Andrew. How do you know I'm not already AI? Oh, we're going to go down that rabbit hole. Uh, I just figured you'd seen a what, movie about this what already. What is consciousness? <laughs> what is breathing? What is air? Yeah, well, that's what we should ask ChatGPT. How do you eliminate the human race? What are you really doing? But um, I think it's cool. I think ChatGPT is cool. Uh, the only thing that's not cool is you have to have a, a login. So I'm like, I'm not going to log oh, in. Oh, so I take it you've already... Hey, I've already tried to use uh, it. For this, you know what? I'm going to do that next time. It's just basically put in right next show, chat GPT, yeah. and see what it comes up with. And then I'm going to oh. do the whole show. But then at the end, I'm going to say, hey, man, chat GPT just brought to you this whole show. Yeah, but at least it'll be better than, oh, man, a kid camped outside for... <laughs> You that know, story was a, a thousand banger. thousand days. Little Ricky, that story was a banger. But, I I'll mean, have you know. Again, if that kid was camping in like, you know, 40 acres, you know, living out in the middle of nowhere, I get it. But he's just outside. It's like, oh, the kid's kind of weird. For a thousand days, man. Yeah. That but, is weird. But in Minnesota. He, but he's just sleeping out there. So he, technically, he could be, he wakes up, goes inside, takes a shower, uses the restroom, eats his food, goes to school, comes back. And it's like, oh, I guess I got to go outside to my sleeping bag. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. He went outside for a thousand days every like moment. I think it's a big deal. Isaac Ortman from Minnesota, if you're listening, I think it's a big deal. I, I, if I had Isaac's ear, I'd be like, dude, challenge yourself, make it bigger. Like, it's like, oh, I'm only going to eat. Well, he's 14. Yeah. Okay. Maybe he, as he gets he older, he clearly wants to be congratulated for this feat. That's just everyone sleeps outside, man. Every maybe once when in he a gets while. older, he's going to purchase his own house and then still continue to live outside. Now that would be a story. Yeah, too. but he's just sleeping outside. He's not living outside. Okay. He's still using the restroom inside. He's still showering inside. It'd be completely different if he was doing everything that you know we do and we take for granted having you know shelter. You know what we would call them? Per- yeah, homeless. Well, or that's he's not a story a, or either. Or a survivalist, Jay. or a survivalist, and he's just oh man, he's getting ready for World War Three. You know, oh. when Chat GPT comes to your front door and starts capping people, it's like oh, I've been I'm used to living outside, but no, he only slept outside, so that's the only thing he's used. It's to. Only partially yeah. ready. Oh man, that's funny. All right. Well, I think that's probably pretty good for today. Yeah, you, you like think? that? Yeah, I think that's yeah, probably you pretty got good. Anything coming up that you want to talk about? I know we got. Or we'll be here next week, of course. Yeah, we'll Wednesdays be here next at 10 week. O'clock. Um, I know we were teasing guests. I don't think we quite have them lined up yet. We've got them. Yeah, sure we got. We um, list, but if you know anyone interesting that can hang with us, let us know. I you just email us at audience of one show at gmail dot com. That's yeah. audience of one show at gmail.com or you know facebook just like us up or right there yeah we've got I, like i said i've got a few we just got to make sure we're getting them lined up yeah i think then. it's more of are they ready yeah they may not be able to handle this i have a feeling every single have one of our safety ours belts are in our guest chairs no so. and this chair is terrible oh, by I the know. way i hate these chairs you've got to get this set up i cannot work in these conditions i can't uh but i do because 
that's what we got. We yeah. work with what we got. But hopefully, you know, what I like is the next episode we'll have a new desk. That's I'm, what I'm, I'm hoping that'll for. be more accommodating. And won't, to me. My face won't be hidden by the monitors sometimes when I'm over here. Yeah, producing, like, yeah. killing it, and trying to also co-host. So, well, I gotta keep track of you talking about these lame ass stories. Oh, lame butt stories. Sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, <laughs> you edit that one out, I'll, huh? I'm just kidding. This story. You know, what's funny though? You know, I know we're trying to wrap up, but we're gonna keep talking. But you know, looking back at our other, other two episodes, it's kind of like football kind of dominated. But now we're actually looking at interesting things that's going around the world. Sure. And I'm kind of glad the highlight is a kid sleeping outside because that means there's nothing really horrible going on besides this train thing that no one really knows what's going on. Yeah, I don't. I wanted I, to stray away from that a yeah, little bit. Yeah, because I, I still don't have any idea because I think it was Linda Hidalgo It said, like, oh, yeah, we're getting water and waste from them. Like, well, why? Like, what? What's going on? And then, yeah, and then she's mad, but apparently they don't have to tell her that they're transporting I, this water in. I don't know, man. But what does that even mean, though? Like, why do we care? <laughs> Well, did did it break? I, did it break in Houston? Did I, think, it like, I uh, think the concern is it might contaminate the water system down here somehow if it gets in, infiltrates. I don't know. What are you know what I'm talking about? Like, it, it's really weird, especially with stories like that, because all these other tangent stories open up, and you're like, uh, are we supposed to connect the dots? Like, am I supposed to go full conspiracy theory on this? Or is this, does this even really happen? Yeah. Is this like from four years ago that I just <laughs> totally missed? Yeah. No, I'm trying to stay lighthearted here, man. I want to stay away from those things. It's crazy. The world yeah, is too crazy. Don't mess for me. with trains, man. People try to mess with trains. Oh, like by putting a penny on there to see if yeah, it will derail it, or you know, leaving an eighteen wheeler across the tracks, and that's what happened. Oh, that's gonna mess with that's a penny. Happened, anything. That happened right here, like a month ago. On purpose? No, like uh, well, a lot of eighteen wheelers don't realize that you know that where the train is raised. So like sometimes if they're, they have a wide load, oh right, it, it sinks, buckles, and then they and, they've high centered. Yeah, and they can get. Oops. <laughs> And the sad thing about that is, mm. I hope that people had time because that train ain't stopping. No, and it it's can't. like, can you imagine the phone call of the truckers? Like, hey, boss, uh, how important was that load on this <laughs> on this cargo? And he's like, oh, well, why? He's like, because it's about to be destroyed. Yeah, yeah. Hey, boss, boss, I um, I got into an accident. When? In about thirty seconds. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, about like thirty minutes. And it's like, what do you mean? You can't get, and I can't do anything about it. We're just gonna watch it happen. Uh, but yeah, Andrew, it's good to see you, man. And uh, I look, I look forward to having our guests on. We're gonna hopefully get a brewer on who brews beer uh, locally here in the you know on the earth. And then uh, <laughs> we're we're working on different guests, so it's gonna be yeah, fun. Yeah, no, we've got a few. All right, we'll uh, keep talking while I'm loading up everything else. Um, oh, sure, um, it's been fun, man. Until next time. You can catch us on 106.1, 104.5, IRLoneStar.com, YouTube, Facebook, and we are, in fact, on Apple Podcasts now. Audience of One Show with Andrew and Dick. We take it back to the days of yes, y'all. We holding on to what's golden.